just a wash of gold. <laughs> and so uh, these were in uh, your centerpieces. That, just so you guys know, uh, about 80% of your centerpieces were actually um, native plants that we collected from the Wilson Springs. Can you remind me what this is? Yeah. I had a bad stone I'm pretty sure I know. No, it's uh. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, okay. It's a scrub. Okay. It's a scrub. Okay. So the golden rod is a flower, of course. And what I learned later on is that flowers have a really important role. Number one, they are. The, well, the most important thing is that they're really uh, the plant's way of reproducing, and that they have all sorts of adaptations that help them to. Uh, attract pollinators or structures that help them disperse their pollen naturally and eventually the pollinated flowers will senesce and become uh, seed pods or fruits and uh, the adaptations that plants have to spread their seeds are really interesting. I, I was just telling some kids uh, the other week about how we think that Fruits like apples are for our sake. We get to enjoy them. But really, the plants are manipulating us to get us to spread their seed. And I found this, and I thought it was beautiful for our uh, centerpieces. But what's really interesting is when I was collecting it, I realized that these are like little natural salt shakers. And if you were to, I think this one's all out. But uh, shaking it on on my hand, all the seeds came out like pepper. So really cool. Just how the form follows the function. Then of course, um, I've learned all these things. Uh, before I knew what they were all about, I loved them as a child. But then I had the opportunity to go into school and learn about, you know, the mycelium and the, uh, you know, uh, seed dispersion and adaptations. And eventually, I landed right where I belonged in the entomology department at the University of Arkansas. So does anyone know what this is that I haven't told them before? Catcher, this is an aspirator, right? It's a bug sucker. I think I think in Europe it's called a pooter. Um, a bunch of other students like to uh, call it a pooter, just for the sake of it. But um, so, we are now going to say that all night. Right? Yeah. Uh, Sims pooter here. It makes a great pendant, first of all. Um, but this was this is actually a great tool that demonstrates. I think if I could be a, a tool as an entomologist or a tool for entomologists, I would be an aspirator. Let's call it an aspirator. But uh, number one, this is a tool. This is a tool that entomologists use to collect very small insects. And um, the small insects are the things that really get me excited. Um, I did my research on a, a fly so small it looks like a tiny speck. And uh, and the life style and the life cycles of these insects are just phenomenal. And there's so much depth and complexity to it. Um, so I just really was grateful oh, for the you. opportunity to um, see that. Now, a little, little bit of uh, background information about that. It has a filter in it so that you can't suck the tiny insects in your mouth. But that filter does not prevent uh, chemicals that the insects emit from getting sucked in. So if you ever are collecting oh, stink bugs, oh. don't go there with the pooter because it will really suck <laughs> down. I've done it before and it's awful. Um, so I, I think the reason I want to tell you a little bit about my story and my experience is because it's really come full circle for me working for the land trust because I've had the opportunity to take kids out into the woods and show them those same things and help them to find the mycelium under the wood or the unique structures in a flower or whenever we catch a snake I get to show them the snake you know uh, and it, I have not had a single snake bite yet uh, since that time I've learned my lesson um, and that's something that's really important especially here in Northwest Arkansas as more and more people are moving here and we're losing a lot of those places that they could go to explore and experience these things. And so it's really awesome to be able to uh, be a proactive force, a positive force for helping connect the next generation of kids to nature. Uh, but it's only possible if we have places like Wilson Springs, that's right behind Sam's Club. And we were out there filming just yesterday 
uh, for another video that we're really excited about. And, um, you know, it's just incredible because you get out there and you feel like you're in, in the wilderness, but you look across and there's Sam's Club looing over you and the interstate. But it's okay because this, this place is a refuge for all the birds and animals, all those insects that I had the pleasure of filming. Um, to be able to have a place to live and to thrive. I didn't know. But Swallow it's them. an ongoing need. We're going to have continued uh, growth here in the region. We're going to have uh, even more kids that may not have an opportunity to come out and do a hike here on the education trail. And so that's why we need to continue to save land. It's really what it comes down to because all these things are only possible when you have a place to hike. <laughs> you have a place to hold up your parents to tell them about the mushroom. And so for that, I'm really grateful to be a part of the solution here at the Land Trust. And so I think um, I want to go ahead and end it there and uh, give the stage up to some people. I think we have a lot of thank yous tonight. And so please, uh, please let us stay. Thank you. Thank you.